Are you wanting to fish a new pond you're not exactly sure how? Well in this video I'll show you how to approach a pond and catch some fish. Coming up! What's up everybody? Derek here from the Bass Factory bringing you the best tips and tools to help you become a better angler. If you're new here you really should consider hitting that subscribe button. So I'm out here on a new pond today. I have not been here but one time a long time ago probably 10 years ago and it actually makes two different segments uh, what is behind me here looks like it might be a point but that is actually an island if you look on Google Maps which we will show you that's actually an island so it makes two different ponds and we got a lot of rain we're in San Antonio Texas and we got a lot of rain about two to three days ago and this thing is flooded. I mean, it's probably four to five feet above its normal level that I seen it at last in what Google Maps shows. There's fish in here and there's big ones. This is Converse Park in San Antonio, Texas. So it's urban fishing. And from the last time that I was out here, I talked to some locals and they said 10 pounder, 11 pounder, 12 pounder, that's what they had heard was the biggest that somebody had caught out of this little lake. It's a clear lake. Uh, it's got grass in it and it, it's beautiful. But whenever you're going to a pond, the first thing that I'm going to look for is where that deep water is. That deep water tells you where the transition point of where those fish are in what season. So you find the deep water, use your baits because you're backpacking, fanny pack, whatever you got, just some lures and you're going out there and you're trying to find the depth because you don't have a depth finder, you can't go over it. So you're trying to find out how deep this lake is, right? Well, you wanna use your lures to your advantage. Those are your depth finders, that's your sonar. That's gonna tell you where the deep water is. Of course, that island right there, you can tell it's higher up in elevation, so most likely, and even this bank right here, it has a steep taper to it. So most likely, the deeper water is gonna be out there. And what you wanna do is you wanna find the transition point where those fish are. Depending upon the season, go to that deep water and fish towards where you think it's shallow. Use those baits, fan cast, hit every, hit every piece of cover. Anything that appears to make a point, a point of grass, a point of land where it comes in the water, a tree that makes a point, anything that makes a point of reference. Those fish, for some reason, always like to be near that. So if you go out here and you fish this deep water and you know what is directly behind me right here is a flat, which is shallower water, you wanna fish that deeper water and you wanna work your way towards that, that way because as the seasons change, winter spring, into spring, those fish are in the deep water and they wanna come shallow. Or they're right next to a drop off and it's shallow on the bank, but it's deeper right off that bank. They're gonna be near that deep water. That is the key. Okay, water clarity. The water clarity tells you whether there's grass, there's stumps, there's mud. It, it tells you all sorts of things. Those carp that are in a lake that are feeding heavily, those things could be in a Spartan area and that could be a muddier section, but that tells you what kind of bottom composition is in there. So, Cause those fish are gonna be churning it up and stirring it up. And then you may move out a little bit to the deeper water and that water, that, that sediment dissolves and it gets clear. And whenever you're wanting to pick a color of a lure, it's very simple. Muddier water, stained water, you wanna go with your darker colors. When you get into your clearer, you wanna get from a, from a spectrum of dark color to clear. As the muddy, muddy water gets, you move along that spectrum and you find what water clarity is best for, for that lure, that lure color. So in the middle, you've got a natural color. So you've got dark colors like your blacks, purples, um, anything that's just a dark color. And as you move into it, you start getting into your flakes and your natural colors. And then all of a sudden you start moving further in that spectrum until you start getting into your clears and your see-through baits. This may be a good lake because it's obviously clear. It rained a couple days ago and it's clear. So it's been filtered, which tells me grass. And I already know that previously being here, but that could tell me that there's grass in here. And the different kinds of um, things that are in the water it could be reeds, it could be hydrilla, milfoil, lily pads, 
I mean, the list goes on. Tulis, just all kinds of stuff that could be filtering that water and cleaning it up. And usually if there's muddier water, there's been a fresh rain, um, it's a rocky lake, it could possibly be. Um, and it could be a muddy, just straight up mud, mud and sand. I mean, there's so many different things and variables when it comes to fishing. But that's how I approach a body of water. And after that, I want to try to resemble what lives in the lake. Find out what lives in the lake. You know what lives in the areas where you live. It's not usually gonna be some kind of exotic species that's living in this lake. It's gonna be similar to what's in other lakes. And you've got your simple stuff. You've got your minnows, you've got your crawfish, uh, bluegill, bass, crappie, catfish. You take those, you can't go wrong. So I try to mimic either a minnow with some kind of minnow flashy bait, a bluegill, which comes into your, your chartreuses or your different um, sunfish colors, and even the whites that can resemble a crappie. So that's minnow, but you upsize your different baits. But that's how you start and you go after those fish and you try to figure it out. So spinner bait, for example, that mimics a minnow. But if you change up your colors, or your blades, it could mimic, like go with a gold blade. It could be more of a bluegill, sunfish, anything else. That's, that's what I typically do and that's what I do when I go for those fish in that water. Well, another thing I forgot, chaps. Water's high, I'm gonna probably be getting wet and I need to put these things on in order to get out there and not worry about snakes so much. Just make me feel a little bit better. I'm gonna be getting wet and it's gonna be awkward with these things being wet, but better that than going to the hospital. Since I'm in San Antonio, rattlesnakes do live around here. I'm gonna start out on the fluke, see what happens. Oh yeah. This water's not completely clear. Not completely. It may be more clear out there on the main part of the lake. Well, I call it lake. It's actually a pond, but it's a decent sized lake now. Yeah. Spinnerbait it is. There we go. With that little bit of dinge tint in the water, these fish might have moved up into these shallows. With that little bit of dinge, if they did move up, that spinnerbait could be killer with those blades. And it's a war eagle. I'm just going to wake it right under the surface. See what happens. Work this whole little area. Oh geez. Snakey snakey. Can we do it? What should we choose? Spinnerbait? I don't think so. Let's give it a shot. Oh, that looks beautiful. With this water being a little more dingy, I'm gonna add a little trick that I know of and that I use. And I've caught 20 bag limits in one little bitty location within about five to 10 minutes. That right there. You just wanna 
thread it on there and you just want it to sit just like that it'll give it a little bit more vibration just work it down in there pull it out work it up there to that little keeper just a little bit of added vibration it makes the bait a little bit larger but oh man makes it look beautiful and you can cast it a lot further with it like that also Keeping my rod tip high to try to keep that bait in the upper part of the column. But I don't want it up too high. I still want some room. I got it about, about 3 o'clock. So I can still get a hook set. Oh, it's beautiful. I'm just going to fan cast this whole little area. Just a little tip, whenever the water goes up, most typically, or usually, the fish will follow the water as it goes up or it recedes. So if the water's going up, depending upon time of the year also, but as the water's going up, the fish will move up some. And as it goes down, the fish may be moving out. Just a little thought, they move with the water. Maybe kind of a weird thing to say also, but on the south side of San Antonio, there's alligators. <laughs> oh, I would barely be able to see one if there was one in this. Hopefully there's not. But if I do, it makes them for some great video. Oh no. I'm just gonna wake that thing right over that log. I got hung on this branch. A lot of times when you're pulling it along and you, you hit some kind of obstruction in the water and you cause those bl blades to flare, like I did right when I pulled it over that log, I don't, I can't tell you how many times I've gotten a hit after something like that. And there's minnows. Probably can't see them on the camera with these polarized sunglasses. I can see them. They're just brunched up. There's probably 10 or 12 of them right off this into this log. I know that's got to be a drop off right there. more cast in this little area then we're gonna move over right there as soon as it comes over that log boom or even just little twitches with the spinner bait see if you can see that reflection as you're reeling along boom Boom, just changing the cadence a little bit. Sometimes it causes a reaction strike. Oh yeah, 
here we go got some wind coming in I may toss it and it's coming back into this little pocket I may toss this little pocket and if not I may put on Texas rig and start throwing out there and see what happens but this is a real good spot this spot could be blowing anytime fish get really active with wind you or you have a tough time finding fish or catching fish my backup plan is always find current that current will blow minnows and other little things across points um, into pockets it will the wind will help you out it will be your friend and a lot of times you find that current and those fish will be in ambush points getting ready not going to use the spinnerbait anymore and i think i'm going to start taking my own advice i know the deeper water is here i was working my way over this way and everything just looked too good to pass it through since it's so difficult going through all this grass and the high water so i finally made it to where this deeper water is so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this texas rig that i've got um this is a six foot six medium heavy <clears throat> with i believe a, a fast tip um it's a veritas Abu Garcia rod and I've got a a Revo Abu Garcia Revo this one was the 64 to 1 and I've got some zoom just worms uh, chartreuse pepper which is a little bit brighter um, since this water clarity I thought it was somewhat clear but it's maybe two foot visibility actually it looks clear it's got that green tint to it like it could be clear but it may take a couple more days so I'm going to tie one of these on. If this doesn't work, I will go to a lizard. And I basically rig that the same as I do a Senko. Just pulling it up on the top of that hook, finding where it's going to come out at, putting it through, and burying the hook. Pull it up, bury the hook, just like that. I'm just going to toss it around right here and see what happens. And that's a half ounce weight. And this is, uh, I believe this is 12 pound fluoro. So we'll see what happens. I don't necessarily need fluorocarbon when the water's dingier like this, but that's what I'm using. And I have to note bird blue skies. Bird blue. New water, bird blue skies. It was cooler this morning in the 50s, which it had been 60s and 70s. So it could be for San Antonio a tough day today. We're just going to have to keep on trying and see what we can put together. I came out here to make a video for you guys and I did not get a fish catch on here and I'm sorry for that but sometimes that's the way it goes can't always catch them but the conditions I don't want to make excuses but it is the worst that it possibly could be north wind bluebird skies sun out waters risen about three to four feet haven't been here in ten years a lot of variables thrown into play there that don't help but I had fun anyways, because I was able to maybe teach you something and uh, help you maybe approach a new body of water or anything like that. And I have never been to a place that is as loud as a place like this. Planes, trains, fire trucks, sirens, I mean, just everything going off today. It's just been nonstop. And I'm sure you've heard a lot of it going on. But anyways, uh, I hope this video was beneficial for you and if you've got a thought or an idea on some other uh, videos that I could be making for you and helping you out with some questions, uh, let me know in the comments section below and if you want to check out some more Bass Factory videos, check them out here and subscribe for more videos just like this one.